Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. On today's show, I'm taking your calls, which is one of my favorite things. And I'm getting into some self-pleasure talk because it's May. And you know what that means? It's Masturbation Month. Topics include how to better educate people of all ages about porn and how to find the good stuff, ways to bring up your fantasies to a partner, what to do when you can't seem to climax even with the help of ED meds, and how to have that dreaded define the relationship talk. All this and more. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Hey, Emily, you got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean, like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex, relationships, and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. Check out the show, our blogs. We've got a lot going on this month because of Masturbation Month. And as always, I love when you subscribe and comment and iTunes. And I'm at Sex with Emily across the board on all social media. If you're there, I'm there. We can connect. So happy Masturbation Month. Yes, it's a whole month, you guys. I love May. May is so fun because... Yes, masturbation deserves a whole month. And you might be saying, well, I masturbate every day. Well, that's good for you because our goal this month is to get people to kind of focus on your masturbation and switch it up, work on exploring your body. We've got some great tips on the site. And you know, masturbation is all part of being healthy sexually. Nothing wrong with a little masturbation. So it got me thinking about this because there's so much going on now with um, with sex and with, and with kids. It's really important that we teach more about pleasure when it comes to sex, especially to young people, and that sex isn't just about, you know, fear-based education. When you think about sex ed, it's like you're going to have an STI, you're going to get pregnant. Oh my God, don't have sex. Only have sex, you know, when you're married. And the thing that we totally skip over is like, wow, there's actually some pleasure to be had. And and here's some masturbation. You know, it's okay if you touch yourself. It's okay. You know, it's totally fine to have these sensations in your bodies. And I think that kids are just, there's so much shame around it. And I think now with porn, what I'm experiencing from a lot of parents, friends with kids, young relatives I have, pretty much everybody, I feel like there's kind of been the tipping point in the last few months where it's like, what do we do with the infiltration of porn right now that kids at like age eight or nine are now seeing pornographic images for the first time? That's the first time they're experiencing sex. And then like they don't talk about it to anybody. Parents are expecting the schools to take care of it. And then they go into school and they're like, don't get someone pregnant. This is a fallopian tube and you better wear condoms. And then they're like, well, what happens to my penis when it's, you know, if I have this kind of a wet dream and girls are like, I don't really know what happens when I orgasms or how do I please myself? Or maybe they were shamed, you know, what happens, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, like that there, there's so many women who really don't have a great understanding of their bodies. And especially at a young age, something, it just takes one thing to happen. Like maybe we're inappropriately touching ourselves at the kitchen table or our relatives come over and a parent says, oh no, honey, that's dirty. Go into the, go into the bedroom or that don't ever do that again, or you'll go blind. And we go get all these messages around, you know, touching ourselves and our bodies that are just wrong. So we should think about if you have kids or you you're an aunt or you're an uncle or there's kids in your lives, I really think that it's important if you can be a really good source, obviously talk to the parents first, but kids are asking questions these days. And even more so, I feel that we have to be on hand to support our youth. And we actually have a blog on the website, why masturbation should be taught in sex ed. And I'm bringing this up because there's definitely some controversy around this. I understand it. I remember when Bill Clinton appointed Dr. Joyce and Elders to the Surgeon General. And her first thing was like, we need to teach pleasure in schools. And people freaked out and she had to step down. And and that was a long time ago. And that was before we could all get porn, you know, on our smartphones. So I think more than ever now, I get it. I get what she was saying. And I think that, hey, there's other parts of the world, like in France. Okay, this is for my French listeners. I need you to find this. They begun using a 3D printed model of the clitoris to teach children not just about the intimate body, but how to get pleasure as well, which makes total sense. 
I want one of these 3D clitorises. Um, Norway, they also, for a long time, you guys, people from Norway, like they are taught about pleasure at a very young age. Young kids are taught, well, when you have sex, when you get older, um, yes, you should be safe. You should use protection. Um, but also, you know, pleasure. Your body is important. It's important for you to experience pleasure. They say this to girls. They say to young girls and to young boys. So the reason why I think it's kind of at a tipping point now is because I think that there's so much porn and there's so much miseducation. So check out the blog. You guys, let me know what you think about it and how how we should deal with educating our youth here today. And um, happy masturbation month. Keep masturbating. Keep talking about it. We all do it. We all masturbate, especially this month. So let's have some fun. And now we're on to your calls, which is my favorite thing ever. If you want to be called, you can go to my website and click on the Ask Emily tab. Mark on the form that you'd like to be called. It's that easy, and I can't wait to hear from you. We have Lee. He's 60 from Indiana, and he's saying that his ED meds help, but still has difficulty reaching orgasm. Hi, Lee. Hi, Emily. Thanks for taking the call. Of course. Thanks for calling. So tell me, tell me some background here. What's been going on? Okay. So I'm 60 years old, great uh, physical condition for my advanced age, and uh, have a wife who's very willing and sexually active as well. But my problem is I've started to have some ED issues. Mm -hmm. And when I take Viagra, it just seems to have an impact on me and I have difficulty achieving orgasm. Right. The problem then becomes I'm able to continue, but I am so concerned that my lovely wife is just putting up with it until I can finish. And right. then, you know, you get it, you get into your head and then the whole thing just becomes <laughs> I get it. more of a, I'm afraid it's, I'm afraid it's more of a chore and less pleasant for her. Yeah, I get it. And what does she say? Oh, she's, she's a trooper, you know, and, <laughs> and she's always, she's always willing to help. And well, it's sometimes we'll finish with masturbation and right. that's fine, but it's just not the same. I get it. I get it's just it. It's not the same. And how long does it take when you're taking the Viagra for you to have an orgasm um, or ejaculation, right? To have orgasm with yeah, ejaculation. Yeah, ejaculation, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think probably, you know, 15, 20 minutes, okay. something like that. Right. And in the past, it was, and, so, yeah, a lot. Yeah, shorter. in the past, it was less. I think the challenge is uh, without the ED meds, then I'm constantly worried about whether I'm going to lose oh, it. No, I get it. It's like, it's kind of like you might as well just take Viagra just to make sure it's like <laughs> one less thing to worry about. Now, what about testosterone? Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm using a testosterone supplement. Okay. Um, what kind of supplement? Like, so have you been have, to your doctor and got checked? Because there's some great, like testosterone medication and supplements have come a long way. There's like bioidenticals for men. There's different creams and patches and you can get like the pellets, like these bioidentical pellets you can put in your back that dissolve. There's some great solutions right now. Have you been to your doctor lately? Yes. And I am using a bioidentical hormone cream. So yes, I've had the appropriate testing and kind of now we know that the testosterone levels are where they need to be, which is great and not so great because it certainly accelerated my sex drive, but I then see. you've got the performance issue on the other side. You know, this getting old stuff is not for <laughs> I know. It's not fun. I'm telling you every year, right? There's something that's another thing. I get it. So I feel like, I mean, there's some things with ED, like, was it the kind of thing like the ED was happening for a while and then it just sort of, you know, and then you start taking Viagra or was it like right away you start taking Viagra right when it happened? Cause I'm no, like, so... Start, started having some ED stuff, which led me through the testosterone, which then wasn't still kind of holding out, wasn't performing quite the way, had a lot of other benefits, but didn't have the sexual experience that I was looking for. And that's when I started in with the ED drug. Okay. Do you mind taking Viagra if you didn't think that your wife was having a hard time with it as well? Like, how do you feel about taking a pill when you have sex every time? Um, no, I'm not crazy about it. Um, you know, there are some weird sort of blood pressure-y kind of things you can feel going on. And I just don't like the fact that, you know, you're supposed to take the med, then wait half an hour to 45 minutes. So it makes the whole thing rather programmed and right. not spontaneous. And, no, I understand. You know, and I think that's, that's the issue for me, I think, is it just makes it feel like 
sex is now more of a chore yeah. than, than a, something that we can just spontaneously enjoy. Well, I wonder if there's a way that you guys could take the pressure off both of you and just kind of start to enjoy it again with, with foreplay and not just penetration. Because I feel like if you took the pressure off, you're like, okay, the goal is n- not necessarily orgasm here because you have the sex drive, right? I mean, you guys have the attraction, the chemistry. So maybe it's more about like playing around and like you're pleasing her and she's pleasing you. And then if you get soft again, you know, you please her, you watch TV, you go back to it. Like maybe it becomes more of like this organic, playful thing where you're not feeling like it has to be all about penetration because let's say she gets off, right? She has an orgasm. You go down on her, use a toy, but then it comes back to you. If you're masturbating, can you maintain an erection? Like if you guys do mutual masturbation, are you able to stay hard that way? It's just during intercourse that you have the ED. Uh, yeah, typically, yes. And I think that has to do with the, um, uh, you know, I'm not worried about your uh, orgasm. I don't terms, know how to put right? this other than, yeah, I'm not worried about her at that point. She's there. She's a partner, but I'm not just kind of torturing the poor woman. While right. I'm trying to See, it, I feel like I mean? there's a lot of pressure. So what I'm saying is I just want you to take the pressure off both of you. Cause it sounds like if she gets off and she's happy, you'll, you'll be satisfied and you know that you can get there as well. So maybe you can play around with like not using the Viagra each time. And then you're just sort of, Maybe there's some mutual masturbation where, you know, she's getting off and like I'm saying, and then she comes back to you and then maybe she finishes you with masturbation and you can kind of see that you actually can get hard again without the pills. I feel like it can become, you can become reliant on it. And so if you realize that you can actually have enjoyment without just like the standard having sex for, you know, the intercourse and you're pounding away at her and you feel like she's just... Because either way, even if she tells you she's in it and that she's a trooper, you don't want to be having sex with your wife like she's a trooper and you already have that in your head. Because a lot of this is in our heads. Like so much of our sexual challenges are because of anxiety, because of worry, because of what happened last time and we think it's going to happen the next time, right? And then people have like a lifetime of these things. So I'm saying if you guys could just both talk about it together and say, don't even worry about, you know, let's not worry about if I'm hard or not. Like let's just engage in foreplay like kissing take a bath together play with some toys some some fantasy play like just things that you haven't done before and then and then go back to like you know making sure she's pleased and then go go back to like pleasing yourself during masturbation she can do it with her hand her mouth and kind of like take a break from that for a while because i feel like no matter what it's not going to feel great to you right now taking viagra every time well i appreciate that thank you that's good advice is it have you heard this before have you heard of guys having delay with Viagra? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that is the thing with Viagra. So what I would also say is if you're okay, yeah, this, see, this is the thing. It's like people who take antidepressants, like I'm no longer depressed, but I can't get turned on during sex. So Viagra, like you stay really hard long, but it takes a long time to orgasm. It's kind of like, you know, there's always side effects. So I have heard this. And I also think a lot of it, again, it, it's what has happened in the past. And that I think that like, I have a book, I'm just looking at it here across the room. It's called Hot Sex over 200 things you could try tonight. And my, my point is that if you get something like that, or you can buy like a sex game, like my, there's different suggestions that you guys could have that you would open it to a page and say, let's try this position. Like, let's tease each other tonight. Like, because a lot of it is not just about the in and out penetration. It's about other things you can do for intimacy. So you guys could do um, sensual massage together. You could tease each other. Like, there's just a lot of other things that, with sex that's not just penetration. And I think that once you guys start enjoying other things and you kind of grow what sex means to you, not just intercourse, that you can come back to intercourse and you probably want to as much of a challenge around it. You'll realize, you'll get that confidence back that, oh, we can actually enjoy this. You're not feeling like she's getting bummed out at you, you know? So I would just try to mix up the way you think about sex and try some new fun things together. Thanks. I'll I'll follow your advice. I like (laughs) that. Thank you very much. You're so welcome, Lee. Um, Good luck to you. Let me know what happens. Please. You got this. Okay. Bye. Bye, Lee. Thanks. You guys, this is the thing. I think a lot of our challenges around sex does arise in our mind. We think something happened before. We've never had an orgasm in a certain position or we can't get hard without medication. And it's, you know, and it changes over time as we get older. We have different bodily functions. And I just think the bottom line with sex is that even if you're just, you're falling into a routine, there's challenges, just try to mix it up. I mentioned my book. There's also games out there you can play, go shopping at a sex toy store. Anytime you bring something new into the relationship, then you guys can focus on this new novelty, something fun to play with, something that changes up your routine. And then you realize going into it, wow, there's something new to focus on. We're not going to obsess about whatever challenge we're having. And you'll realize when you circle back to that, that it won't be as much of a problem anymore. 
Okay, we have Lisa. She's 32 from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and she wants to have the define the relationship talk, but doesn't want to come off as clingy. I hear you, Lisa. What's going on? It's never easy Hi, to Emily. have that call. Hi. <laughs> so basically, I've been dating this guy for a little over three months now, and I haven't been in a committed relationship for the past five years. I've been dating, and this is really the first time that I'm starting to feel that itch to be a little something more. I haven't felt that in so long. Um, we're both really independent people and I'm so used to just kind of calling the shots, I guess, that the fact that he's not bringing it up and I kind of want to bring it up, but I don't want to sound like needy or clingy. Um, I'm just not really sure how to do that without right. sounding that way. No, I get it. I get it. I've been there too. I understand being that girl who you're like, wait a minute, I'm the independent girl. Why isn't this guy doing it? I love it. He's challenging you. So this is good. <laughs> but also yeah. I think that, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, you're cool. You're busy. You don't want to bring it up. You don't want to seem needy, be vulnerable. That's all a challenge. The thing is you realize what you need right now and what you want. You've been with them for two months or you think you do, right? And you just want to have a conversation. You just want to, have you guys had any conversations? Have you said anything like, hey, this has been fun or let's see each other a few yeah. nights a week? Okay, so you've said a little bit of that and you know that he's into it. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think he's dating anyone I, I'll start talking to anyone else, but I kind of, I guess I just need that confirmation, but I'm afraid to bring it up. I know I get it. And there's nothing wrong. Okay. Here's the thing. You're taking care of yourself right now. So I think that the longer you don't bring it up, you know, it, it'll just wreak havoc. You'll start to like resent him. So I say, you know, you can come out very strong and not clingy with this and just say, babe, this has been, I'm enjoying this two months. I just think it's time we have that talk. I know it's silly, but we've been dating for two months. And I'm just curious, like, where do you see this going? I'm really enjoying it. And like, just not making it like the talk, even though in your head you're like shaking and you're like, oh my God, it's a serious thing. Like I always say, do it in a casual environment when you guys are like hanging out, having brunch, going for a hike or whatever it is when you guys are the most chill and you used to be like, wow, it's been almost two months. This has been fun. So like, let's talk about it. I mean, I think we're both having a good time. Um, are you, are you, you know, let's talk about are you seeing someone else. I'm not seeing anyone else. What about you? Or are you seeing anyone else? Or, you know, what are you looking for now? This is the time where we got to talk about it because then you're not, you're opening it up. You're not saying, if don't sleep with anyone else, I'm not sleeping with anyone else. Let's get married till death do us part. <laughs> but I get that that's how it feels to you, but there's a way yeah, to make it yeah. not seem that way. So, can you, do you think you can do that and just be like, hey, let's check in? Like, after two months, I think that's, you're feeling that you need to do it now. So, it doesn't even matter. Like, if it was a week, I'd say, okay, I get it. But two months is legit. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's like well, yeah. Nut- well, it's actually three months, but. <laughs> oh, okay. Dude, three months. Not that. Yeah, sweetie. And I get that it makes you really vulnerable, but I think this will be good for you because I think like, yeah. what if he says to you, you know what? I actually am dating a few people now. I'm not sure about you. You know, then, you know, you have more information and then you can talk about that. But for all you know, he's feeling the same way you are. And so you just, you got to gather more information because it's just, you don't need more time to go on playing it cool, waiting for him to bring it up. So. I think yeah. there's no time like the present. Yeah. I always hear that, oh, well, if a guy wanted it, he would have brought it up by now. Like, that's what I... I yeah, those think. messages aren't necessarily true because he might have th- be thinking the same thing. Girls always bring it up. So actually, that's not mm-hmm. true. I think I've heard the opposite and neither one are true. So I think that he's probably might be waiting for you, but we won't know until you bring it up and you be the strong and he'll probably be really relieved because believe me in this day and age, if it's been three months and you both met on Tinder, like either he's thinking, here's two, here's two scenarios. He's either like hoping that you not to be, not to put you in this place, but he's hoping you don't ask because he's actually dating a bunch of people or he's relieved that you did ask because he wants some clarification as well. And either way you're getting your answer and you're getting clarity. Yeah. Life's That's too short true. to stay That's- in this undefined place. You know, it was good for a while. Now it's mm-hmm. not. So now you need some more information. And so you can do it in a calm way where you come off as cool Lisa who knows what she wants. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that feels good. Okay. You got this. It's a skill. It's this communication thing. But you you just, you practice. You'll feel good about it. I promise. Okay. Okay. I will. <laughs> promise? Okay. Do it soon. Um, it'll yeah, feel so, it'll feel so it. good. Yeah, really. <laughs> like you'll feel so much like ripping a bandaid off, but you'll feel so much better. Mm-hmm. And be sure, here's one more thing I want to say. A lot of times you're so nervous to have this conversation that he may be like, oh, it's cool. We, it's cool, babe. We don't need to define it yet. Like, let's say he says that. 
if you're like, okay, I don't want to talk anymore. I already brought up. I would say that this is when you got to keep talking. It's okay to ask for clarification. It's okay to say, you know what I heard you just say? Because a lot of times these conversations happen and we hear something completely different. So I'm going to give you this other tip. Say, okay, so you're saying, I'm just going to make this up. You're saying that you're actually not dating anyone else, anyone else on Tinder right now or wherever, and you'd like to just be exclusive. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Like, repeat back what you hear. Yeah. So you make sure you're both on the same page because there's a lot of couples who think they've had a conversation and they both hear something different. Yeah, that's a good, that's good advice. Okay. The rest is up to you. You got it. You got this. Trust yourself. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Lisa. Have fun with this. Have Thank a great you. night. Bye. Bye. Uh, I love the define the relationship question. I don't think there's any rules that he or she or should bring it up first. I think it's when you feel that you need some more information to make you feel good in the relationship, that it's time to have that conversation. And I think it's also important to remember here that you need to clarify it and you need to have the conversation perhaps more than once. I think that sometimes we're just so relieved that we had the talk and we keep going, but I think the clarification part and to have the strength to know that asking for what you want and relaying what you want is actually coming from a place of strength and not a place of weakness. Those are some great questions. And when we come back, I'll be answering more. So thanks for supporting our sponsors. I'll be right back. All right, we have Bree. She's 28 from Brooklyn, and she wants to know how to better educate our youth about porn. What a good question, Bree. What are we going to do about it? How are you? Hi, I'm good. Good to talk to you, Dr. Emily. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Tell me what's going on. Yeah, so I have had experiences with men um, who have been really into porn, and I'm not into it because I recognize that the way it's affected their relationship is the sex is very friction-based. It's not exciting. It's not personable. It's like they're mimicking what they've seen. Right. And I feel that that is something that affects people when they watch it. It's like monkey see, monkey do. Exactly. (laughs) You're right. So, okay. So, so yeah. So you, and you see this direct correlation with the men that you've dated that are watching a lot of porn or just porn at all? Like, are you just frustrated with men in general right now or (laughs) around porn? (laughs) I understand. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think it's more the culture. Um, I think it's the, the porn culture um, or the, the culture of people just um, being so involved in watching it. Right. Um, and just like the importance of, um, in contrast, just human human connection and exactly. curiosity. Well, that's where, yeah. I mean, so, so really the question, you're just asking like, what do we do about, yeah, I'm concerned about porn because I feel like for so many young people, that is the first thing they ever see, right? Is, is people at the first sex education they have right. education in quotes right. is watching porn. Right. And that's how they expect right. sex is going to be. And technically we all know that porn is a visual medium that is just made for pleasure. It's not made to be instructional, educational or tutorial at all. And how you get that message out to the youth of our world, you know, I, I'm doing the best I, I can here. I think that there's a, a lot of parents and educators and who really who feel the same way because I don't have a problem with porn like I think that it can serve a purpose it, it can be very um you know give you some good ideas it can kind of inspire you turn you on but when you're using it as a roadmap for how you actually should be having sex that's when we have a problem and also the more and more you watch it the more you keep escalating what you have to watch to get more of a hit to more get more of an impact and so you're right it is about connection it's about using your your minds and your brain's fantasy you know creating your own sort of images in your mind, but when you're actually having sex with someone to make that eye eye contact, to breathe together, to connect. And I think that it's just another thing that's keeping us, you know, apart from each other. But I also recommend if people are into porn, like I love, I did a show with Erica Lust a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago now, who she does like ethically produced porn. It's like from like the female gaze, not from the male gaze. I think her porn is really beautifully shot and enticing and erotic. But I think like everything, moderation with porn is best. But I think that for guys, it's literally can be like an addiction that they have to like wean themselves off of it. But it's totally possible. I mean, I know I know men who have made it a practice. They're like, okay, I'm going to maybe start with porn and not end with porn, or I'm just going to do it three times a week. But you know, three times a week, I won't use porn. So does that answer your question? I'm just um, 
I don't know how else. Yeah. Gonna... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And I, you know, I, I think that, um, there's definitely a place in the Tantra world to explore, um, intimacy I, in yeah. any way. There's games like I'm actually in the process of developing a game. That's a card game that's designed for people who are either in relationships or Good. dating. And there's, you know, questions on the cards and playful prompts that are intimate and sexual. I love that it. That invite this interaction, you know? Yeah. And so I think that that's something that will help. I um, think so too. I love so, that. I love that you're doing a game. Yeah. I think anything that can take couples like like tantric sex is such a great practice and I wish there was like another word for it because it freaks people out. But you're right. It's breath. It's connection. I love that you're doing a game because like, hey, let's play this game. We don't have to talk about it, but this game will prompt us what to do. I mean, the more tools right. that couples have, people have to kind of learn about sex in a healthy way, the better. And I'm definitely like working on my own stuff here because I really am sort of obsessed with the sex education right now and how we can help youth um, kind of get away from it. It makes me sad, you know, that that's, that women yeah. feel they have to act a certain way in the bedroom and guys are confused right. by, you know, when they're not acting that way and, and they're just feeling pressure and it just seems like it's taking all the fun out of sex. So yeah. keep, keep doing yeah. it, Bri. I yeah. think that's great that you're even talking about this. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I think, Brie. Let me know when your game comes out. I'd love to see it. I'd love to help you with it. Send it along to us. Yeah. Jeez. Keep talking I about will. it. I will. Thank yeah. you. You're so Absolutely, welcome. Absolutely, Emily. And then the Thank guys you that you're so with much. also let them know too that there's other options, you know? So I wouldn't just give yes. up on them altogether, but there needs to be more people talking about this. So yes. keep fighting it. Yeah. Let's I love keep it. the conversation going for I sure. I agree. I agree. You're inspiring me. I should have another podcast about it too. I love it. Thank you, Bree. Have a great day. Okay, I will. I will. Thank you very much. Bye. Now, I've been talking about this. I've been doing my show for 13 years now, and I feel like that's probably about the time that porn started becoming more readily available on phones or, you know, online. So, and I, but I actually feel in the last year, there's been an even more heightened awareness around porn, and we just can't escape the impact that it's having on everybody. It's not even youth, which concerns me because it's the first like view they have of, of sex. But I feel like even men and women, but I hear it from men more who have been masturbating to porn. They just have to keep raising the bar and seeing things that are more and more um, sensational and things that they can't possibly recreate in real life with an actual human. And so it is scaring me a little bit. It's scaring me that for a lot of people, they think it's just easier to sit home and watch porn and roll over and fall asleep than having to actually meet a human and connect with them and learn how to navigate a new body and to feel pleasure and to ask for what we want. And so I have to say, you guys, I'd love to hear from you. What, I don't know what you, what you think we should do about it. I would love to like go around the world and lecture and talk to you about this and create other forums for people communicating. But just know that you're not alone if you've been feeling this way. If you have children, it's okay to talk to them about sex and to answer their questions about sex at the age that they are asking. If they're asking you at six years old, why does you know, my brother have a penis and why do I have a vagina? Then you answer them. Kids are seeing porn like eight years old, nine years old is the first instance of them seeing it. So, you know, you might think, oh no, that's never going to happen to my kid. But I guarantee you there's someone at school or someone's parents, you know, they've got their hands on their phone or computer and they've seen it. And these are the images in their head and it's okay to um, to talk about it. And, and in a relationship, you don't have to settle for it either. If, if it's not that you get mad at your partner, but there's, because I know there's a lot of women who are like, I don't understand why he ever watches porn. And I'm telling you that men and women will watch porn in and out of a relationship. Healthy use of porn is fine in moderation, but if it has become a problem, it's okay to also talk about that and to um to seek help. So that's my thoughts on porn today. We have Scott. He's 24 from Pennsylvania, and he wants his girlfriend to have sex with another man. Hey, Scott. Hey, how are you doing? I'm so good. Now that I'm talking to you, tell me what's going on. We're talking about cuckolding well, here. About couples? Cu- we call it cuckolding, right? And it's in the sense that you'd like oh. to see your partner have sex with someone else and watch with another man. Uh, correct. I and mean, it's not in the sense of, like, I condone cheating or anything like that, but I just been having, like, this weird, um, I guess, fantasy mm-hmm. yeah. where I get turned on by her. Uh, yeah. Like, I just imagine her being with someone else. And I, I just think it's, it, it, it's kind of weird. It, it is weird. I get I'm, that it's I wanna, weird to you, but it's common. 
it's actually more common than you think. And it's not necessarily that unhealthy either, believe it or not. Like, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. You know, so so tell me tell me a little bit more. So you've been having this fantasy and... And yeah. I, uh, like, anytime I work up the courage to uh, try to tell her or anything like that, I, I feel like she'll look at me with three heads or any, you know, she, she'll, she'll find it weird. I mean, that, like, when you just first say that out loud, like, who wouldn't find it weird? But, you know, we haven't... I want to say an average sex life. Um, it's kind of hard because we are long distance right now just because oh. of the fact that she's doing her um, grad program for uh, you know, occupational therapy and I'm a firefighter. And uh, so I, I work 24 on, 72 hours off. And, mm. you know, it's it, it's very hectic, our <laughs> schedule. It sounds like it. And you so, guys, have been, how long have you been together? Uh, five years. Okay. And has it been long distance so, for five years? Yeah, and like before, I you know we settle down, and yeah, you know, I even start thinking about any of that. I definitely do want to get all of our fantasies out of the way. That way, you know, or or we could you know continue doing them. But I, I just would like to know, I guess, how to bring it up, or you know, if, if it is uncommon or common. Yeah, well, you know, so. yeah, no, I think it's great. This is a great call because it's actually it's called cuckolding is what it's officially called. And it's been around since. The beginning since people started having sex. Um, that's like C U C K O L D I N G. And so basically you're having a fantasy of seeing your partner with another man. And so and watching, and that can be like a, like a, for a lot of couples, if they're both on board, it can be kind of a part of their, you know, healthy healthy fantasy life, a healthy sex life. So the thing is though, you you couldn't obviously do it if, unless she is on board. And so I understand that um, it's something you need to talk to her about. And I know that, that also is, um, you're not even sure. You're like, oh, is it weird? Is it awful? It's definitely not like the most like common in the sense of, oh, I, you know, I, I want to spank you or something. But it's, it's also not as like fringe and out there and weird as you think. So the first thing I have to ask you is in these five years that you've been together, have you guys talked about your sex life? Uh, we we do talk about it. Um, I guess not as much as you would think. We well, nobody talks about it, so I actually don't assume that you talk about. It. People don't talk about yeah. it nearly enough. I guess what I mean to say is, let me rephrase that. Have you guys talked about? Have you shared fantasies with each other? Not really, and it, it's it's really complicated because I I feel like I have a way higher sex drive than she does, mm-hmm. and you know she she's just not into sex as much as I, I am. Where like if I had my way, I would do five times a week and you know she would do once or twice right so how often do you guys see each other though we see each other probably for the past year probably like maybe a week a week and a half out of the month so seven eight nine days maybe out of the Mm -hmm. month right and so that i can understand too why you might be missing her a lot too and you'd want to have more sex if you guys have never had been in a place where it's a regular, you know, you're seeing each other every day. Do you have any um, plans to be living in the same city soon where you would be able to kind of move it to the next level of the relationship? Yeah. So as soon as, soon as she's finished with her grad program, you know, we're going to live together. Well, we used to live together like when we first started dating for the first two years. And then she had to move on with college and I got into this fire academy. Right. So that's what happened. Okay. But um, I'm just curious because a lot of times when people are, I just ask because people in long-term relationships who don't have plans to ever live in the same city, I get concerned. I'm just like, you got to either figure it out or break up because if it's going to be long, you know, long distance forever, doesn't really make sense. So the first thing you have to do is I think you, you don't lead with, I'd love to see you having sex with other men, but you do have to lead with, um, let's talk about our sex life, you know? let's talk about fantasies or what turned you on. Like, do, do you fantasize? What do you fantasize about? Like, do you think that she masturbates when you're not together? Have you guys talked about any of that? We, we have, and it's a very, it's, it's always a, the same thing over. It's a very brief discussion. Like she, she's scared to say her fantasies or anything. And I, I don't want to, I don't feel like I push her into sex or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm a very casual right. person. So it's, uh, 
Well, most it's, people feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it's awkward. No, I get it, honey, because here's the thing. Most people don't talk about sex, and when they do, it's really awkward and uncomfortable. So we're not taught how to talk about sex. So I totally get that it's awkward and that you're not like a bet. You're not like pushing her. You know, you sound like a really nice guy. who You have this fantasy that you want to share with the woman that you love. And so I think that... Um, I think that I'm, you probably have asked her what turned her on and she's like, oh, I don't know. I, we don't need to talk about this now and the conversation's over. So I think that to get comfortable with this, you got to build up to this. You say, babe, I think about you when we're not together. I fantasize and I, I want to I know, like I want to get closer sexually. I want to know what kind of things that you think about. And now maybe she doesn't think about anything or she doesn't have fantasies exactly. that she wants. To, right. Well, there's a lot of women who don't have fantasies and they actually don't even think about sex. So... <laughs> I think that there's some groundwork to lay here. And so maybe you guys could do some, do you ever do any FaceTime calls when you're not together? Uh, yeah, uh, we do. It's like probably like a couple times a week. Okay. But I mean, we, we're always, we're always texting, always on the phone. You know, we're always sharing each other's lives. Right. So. so like about how your day went. I think it'd be great to have like a call where you guys are like, you know, when you're maybe even have a date, you're like, let's have like a fan, like a FaceTime date. Where we're both like eating dinner and we're talking. And you could just say, I want to like, you know, you're the woman I want to be with and I want to talk about our sex life. Like, I want to know, you know, what kind of things turn you on, if you masturbate. And I've been thinking about some things too. And so I feel like you wouldn't lead with this, but you might tell her some things that you think about her, you know, that you think about her body when you're not with her. You think about having oral sex with her. Again, this is this is one that she might be like, what? Because she's never heard of it, doesn't understand it. But I feel like there's just some communication work that you have to do here with her. And when you guys are together having sex, is it good? It's satisfying? Does she have orgasms? Are you? She she does have orgasms, but the thing is, sometimes I'll be going down on her, and you know, she'll literally she's almost to the point that she'll get there, and then she'll like push me away, and I'm like, you know, like to the point where she doesn't climax, and I'm a little like maybe I kept on going or I shouldn't, but like you know, after five years, I I would know by now, and it's. She, so I want to say 80% of the time, she's always, as soon as she gets there, she, like, pushes me away. Okay, what about during and, intercourse? Does she have orgasms? Not as not as much as she'll, she'd like. Uh, we, we do, like, bring sex toys to the bedroom, but she she's not uh, she's not one of those girls that... Okay, and how old is she? Is she your age? She's 24? Yep. Okay. 24. So I think that... I, I love that you're having... You know, that you are thinking about this right now because I think she needs some self-pleasure, some masturbation. I'm going to bring up this book again that I've been lately, I, I'd forgotten about, but it's such a good book. It's called Sex for One. It's by Betty Dotson. It's a great book for women to read. If they have any shame or anything just about self-love and masturbation, it makes them feel guilty. I think that it's really important for her to get in touch with her own body, her own sexuality. Like I would recommend if she's into porn, I love Erica Lust makes really great porn that she could watch that would turn around so she could start to be feeding some fantasies because I feel like she's not where you're at sexually that the fact that she's pushing you away during sex and that she's not really sure how to say it just means that she hasn't had as much experience. And it's very common for women in their early 20s to just not be as open sexually and so it's not like there's still some work to do and you can gently encourage her on her part how much you want her to see experience pleasure don't pathologize it don't make her wrong don't you need to do this you need to do that just say babe i really want you to have pleasure during sex and i you could even tell her like listen to the podcast together next time she comes in town or but there is some work that she has to do on her own to feel comfortable in her body and to be to, to become more sexual and more confident and so I think if you can start talking about that and empowering her and giving her tools and understanding that like masturbation is part of a healthy sex life, then you can work up to like, I think it'd be really hot to see you having sex with another man and to watch like, but I don't think that she's there yeah. yet from what you're telling me. Yeah, definitely not. And that's what, that's what my main concern about. And if we do ever reach that, that point, definitely recommend no friends no anything right everything like that, okay right we, so no friends just like you know and also like explain to her that like it's really just about having her experience so much pleasure that you just think that would be so hot to see her having sex with someone else like it's just it's your fantasy it's like that it would be hot and yeah no friends um yeah, she'd have to, I, I, she'd have I, to be 100 percent on board you have to find someone that you both want to be with and it's about her pleasure but she's not even there yet to, to be able to understand what you're talking about but I don't think you have to let it go yet, but this fantasy ever, but you need to work with her um, and see if she's willing to kind of start exploring her own sexuality, especially because you guys aren't together all the time. So she's got plenty of time to do some hands-on work. 
I really appreciate it because it's, it's like one of those really awkward things where like I you know I would like dream about it or like I know. When, when like when, when you watch you know porn and you see that kind of like role play and you're just like wow it's, you know that's, it's that's, hot that's right really hot. no I get it it's and, really common porn and uh, and then like I'm, I'm like having these these urges to kind of tell her but I, I don't want to like you know freak her out and like you I know, mean you could too I know well that's the thing it's like I, I just think you got to start push. I think you got to be brave and push the sex talk like like I love you babe and having a healthy sex life is so important to me and I feel like we have to make some inroads it's been five years it's so important to me that we start talking about what turns us on if you don't know what turns you on yet and what feels good I want to work with you on getting there either alone or together we could do mutual masturbation we could watch porn together that we both find a hot like tell her that like it's uh, together you want to work on it or encourage her on her own and then you'll get there quicker but don't let this slide because it's been five years already so now is it you've nothing wrong with you bringing up that you want to have really healthy sex and communication around it that's great so start there and don't put yourself up for your fantasy because if you do you lay the groundwork you know you'll be able to talk to her about it and you'll call me back when you guys get there awesome all right well, last question i'm, yeah. I'm sorry i'm bugging you so much no I'm, it's okay to to i'm here I, for you no i'm like, so glad to seriously, I, <laughs> um so how do I push the next level as far as just, um, you know, instead of toys or anything like that, how can I uh, spice it up after five years, I guess, or, you know, bring something else to the table? Um, besides toys, um, I think, what do you guys go shopping in like a sex toy store together and, and, and buy some buy some like you know a lot of women love dressing up she might feel great in some sexy like some sexy lingerie or role playing um for words for women is really hot like talking dirty or reading erotica like is she an intellectual maybe if you got some books some erotica and you read to her while she took a bath and you massaged her feet and you you gave her champagne and and fed her strawberries you know i don't know what kind of fantasy she but if she let's say she read 50 shades of gray and likes it well then you know if that turned around, maybe she wants to be blindfolded. Like you got, you got to have some information in these five years. And I would take whatever nugget you have. Like think back to the best. Time. Ask her. This is where you start, right, Scott? Say, babe, what was the most memorable time we've had sex? Ask her that. And when she tells you it was that time we were on vacation and we almost got caught when the when the bellhop came in or something, then you know maybe she wants to be caught. Maybe there's some danger. Maybe she likes vacation sex. So, Or you might even be able to figure um, this out on your she own. Does, she does like vacation sex. Vacation sex? She does. Good. Yeah, and and, and it, 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 it freaks me out sometimes because like, there's one time where we got a little, a little tipsy like in New York City at, um, at, at a Chinese restaurant. And she was like, uh, hey, do you want to fuck in the bathroom? And I'm like, um, babe, there well, you go. Yes, but maybe. I, I don't know. <gasps> yeah. No, Scott, good, good. We're making such progress. So she's not so shy sitting there all alone. She wants, she needs a few drinks and she wants to have sex in the bathroom and get caught, maybe. She thinks it's really hot to have spontaneous sex. So maybe next time you guys are out, you want to grab her and like have sex. I mean, I mean, it can be illegal to have sex outdoors, but you know, maybe you have a picnic somewhere isolated and you have sex or go on a road trip or get a hotel room next time she's in town because getting a hotel room, just switching up the environment next time she comes to visit and like planning some things, you know, start asking questions and listening to the answers of the build from there. Awesome. Okay. That's a lot. This is good, yeah. Scott. We made progress. <laughs> But don't back off of this. I think this What's is good. It? We made some progress. Yes. Yeah, she's fun. Yeah, she no, wants to have sex you. in the bathroom. I, I, pre- I appreciate it, Emily. Yeah. You're literally awesome. I look <laughs> at you like uh, anytime you put out a new episode. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. I'm here for you. You got to keep me posted on this one because you're going to get further on this. It's a project, but it'll be fun. It's some really important work. Okay, no problem. Definitely will. Okay. I'll see you next week. Okay. So we'll uh, see if we can stick it out. Yay. Let me know how, it, seriously, let me know how it goes. Send us an email. Okay. All Bye, right. Scott. Bye. Have a great Thank night. You, Thanks. Bye. Okay, guys, as you can see that communication is a lubrication, you guys got to just talk. Just keep talking to your partner about sex and don't let them get away with the, I don't know, I haven't thought about it. I mean, if you've been with someone a while, invest in getting to the bottom of your sex life, figuring out what turns you both on. It might take a while, but you guys, it's like I always say, it's the most important work you can do. And this is fun. Maybe you... Find some erotica you like to reading together. You like, you know, role playing or dressing up. A lot of us don't know what our fantasies are because we don't even know what's on the menu. So the more options you talk about, the more you explore together, the more you get drunk and have sex in a bathroom. I don't know. Figure out what turns each other on. Um, the better sex you're going to have. That's just the truth, people. So have that talk right now. 
today, tonight, do it. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks to my amazing team, Ken, Jamie, Jenny, our volunteers, Sarah, producer Lark, and Michael. Was it good for you? Email me, feedback at sexwithemily.com.